So let's check out the three-year-old standard bred standouts who visited the first state recently. First, let's watch Matron action with the sophomore trotting fillies in their over $141,000 event. They go by three quarters in 125 and two fifths as they make their way midway on the final turn and it's still call me goo. Quick stop on the outside. Dropping back now. Help of the season as they come over toward the top of the stretch. They're ready to turn for home with call me goo and Dexter Dunn pulling away. They open up three, four lanes coming through the stretch. Call me goo. Quick stop second down the inside. Help of the season. They come toward the wire. Call me goo is in front. Call me goo. Quick stop and help of the season in 153 and two. Call me goo owned by Graham Grace Stables crossed the finish line two lengths ahead of the field in 153 and two. It was her 12th win out of 16 starts this year. The daughter of Goo Goo Gaga was driven by four time United States driver of the year, Dexter Dunn, and is conditioned by local Delaware trainer, Jason Skinner. And publicity director Al Krasuski was on hand to interview the winning connections. Dexter kind of floated out there on the outside. Uh, was that your intent to go to the top all the way? Well, I'll get handy anyway, you know, so I just had a wide draw. Um, but, you know, Yannick left uh, pretty hard at the gate and I was about to follow him across, so uh, that helped out and um, got the front pretty good and she traveled good the rest of the way. And it looks like you got a nice little breather. You went to the quarter 28, the half and 57 and one. You think that might have sealed the deal because you did buzz the third quarter in 28 and one, mile 153 and two. Were you confident in the lane? Yeah, I mean it was a good back half she come, but uh, the way she did it, you know, I don't think it would have made it um, how fast we went that second quarter if we went a little quicker. She did it really good, so um, she's a lovely trotter. Only drove it the first time last week, but she's beautiful sit behind and Skinners have done a great job with her. Congratulations again, yep. Dexter. Jason, tell us a little about Call Me Goo. It looks like she was kind of a late, uh, late bloomer. Made some money down in Maryland, and she just seemed to be getting better and better. What is it that you saw in her? I wasn't so much as a late bloomer. We just that was the plan all along, just to make sure she sealed Maryland, got everything she could get down there, and then would give her a couple shots in the big shows. You know, we thought she had a lot of potential. She's been a professional from day one. You took her out to Hoosier Park. She was very successful out there. What was the reasoning there? I just, I, she's just a good horse. I mean, big track, little track. She, she can do it any way you want to do it. I mean, she's handy, she's versatile, and she doesn't worry about anything. She's just a good horse all around. Any future plans? Uh, next year, she's going to have a pretty big year, hopefully. We've got the Miss Versatility and um, a couple of the four-year-old races, so we're hoping for a big year. Congratulations, Jason. Moving on, we'll take a look at the three-year-old trotting colt division for the matrons with a purse of over 127 grand. Three quarters in 124 and four fifths, 27 and four fifths on that third quarter. And the leader by a length and a half is point of perfect. Waiting for race room now, Case on road, Dire Straits is on the outside. Calderon trying to go three wide. And they're at the top of the stretch now. They turn for home and point of perfect comes off the turn on top. It's point of perfect. Down the inside, Quezon Road on the far outside, Calderon. They come toward the wire, Calderon on the outside. Dire Straits is there, 3-4 on the wire. They come to the finish, holding on. I believe point of perfect in 155. Point of perfect did the work on the front to win by a head in 155 for owners Burke Racing, Hatfield Stables, J&T Silva Stables, and Knox Services. The son of Walner is trained by Hall of Famer Ron Burke and had Hall of Fame driver Yannick Gingra at the controls. Looking at the horse, Yannick, 32 starts this year, ready to go against these horses. But you open up the quarter 27 and one. Uh, was that your intentions all along? This horse does show tremendous early speed, but going from the bigger track to the smaller race track. Yeah, no, that's one of his uh, no, key things for him. No, he is so quick out of the gate, you know, so I, I wanted to get position. I didn't care if I was going to cut it or not, but then I, I looked in the first turn, and uh, Aki was there, and then David was behind him, so I figured if I let one go, it's, I mean, I'm getting away third most likely, so, uh, you know, I just step on the gas a little more and then, uh, you know, just decide to cut it. And it was a perfect trip. You went to the quarter 27-1, and one, went to the half and 57, backed it up, so you must have been feeling pretty good, and then you opened the, opened the, opened the horse up to 27-4 and four quarter to win in 55. 
Yeah, no, he raced really good. You know, um, you know, in the stretch it was a battle. They were coming from everywhere, but uh, he dug in actually. You know, so uh, uh, you know, credit to the horse. Uh, he, he got the job done. Congratulations, Yannick. Thank you very much. Now it's time to see some matron excitement with the pacing fillies in their over one hundred seventeen thousand dollar event. Three quarters. 122 and three fifths. They make their way over toward the top of the stretch. Going right by and taking a two length lead is Twin B Joe Fresh and Dexter Dunn. They come off the turn that way. And Twin B Joe Fresh is widening the three or four lanes coming through the stretch into second. Always be naughty. Father out McSeaside got loose. They come toward the wire. Twin B Joe Fresh McSeaside races up into second. Back third. Always be naughty. Rec time fourth. 150 and three fifths. Twin B Joe Fresh made a first up bid to take the lead and reach the wire first in 150 and 3. The three year old daughter of Roll with Joe is owned by Peter Trabotica and Barry Speck, along with the Phillies trainer, Chris Ryder, and her driver, Dexter Dunn. Dexter, the last race, you know, when you, you raced on the front, 27, backed it off the quarter. This race, you got away third. Uh, was that your intent all along to, to just let the speed go by? Well, it was just one of those um, deals where I was playing it by year and see how the race unfolded. But we got away in a good spot, and uh, you know, it was a bad drive for me last start in the Breeders' Crown. And uh, you know, the tempo was good enough. She's got a pretty pretty good brush in her late in the piece, so um, she felt great tonight and uh, really happy with it. She was great. She accelerated down the back stretch, and it was over. Did she have anything left, or you just were happy with where you were? Oh yeah, she still had the plugs in and stuff. She she once she cleared, um, she knows her job and she was doing it pretty good to the line there. So, you know, she's just had an amazing year. Chris and Pete and Barb have looked after her brilliantly, and uh, it's been a fun ride. Congratulations, Dexter. Thank you, Chris. Tell us about Twin B Joe Fresh. Um, Ernie's a 1.2 million, not a bad little bankroll. Uh, tell me about her story. Well, the story has been told before. She's an exciting filly. Um, you know, the 1.2 million speaks for itself. Um, she's had uh, just a couple of races where she hasn't got a check, but the rest of the time she's been, if not first, you know, right there. Um, just been a terrific filly from day one, and uh, just, uh, you know, it's just terrific to have her. Yeah. Future plans? We're racing next year. Everything being, you know, as long as she's healthy, which she is, and uh, we, we intend to race next year. Yeah. Fantastic, Chris. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Finally, let's bring in the three-year-old pacing colt division for the matrons with a purse of almost 171 grand. They go by three quarters, 122 and one fifth. Confederate still there by about a length. It's Confederate. Ken Hanover, a rough trip outside. Down inside is Cannibal, three wide attempt from El Ray. They come toward the top stretch now. And Confederate turns for home with the lead. It's Confederate by two lanes. Racing in second. That's Cannibal down the passing lane coming through the stretch. It's Confederate on top with Cannibal down the rail. Nobody beats Confederate. Confederate's in front. Cannibal and tight for third. Ken Hanover, 149 flat. Confederate, who is ranked the number one horse in the entire country, proved exactly why that is with this impressive 149 victory. Owned and bred by Diamond Creek Farm, the son of Sweet Lou recently won the Breeders' Crown and has made it to victory lane in 13 out of 14 races this year. Confederate is trained by Brett Pelling and driven by Hall of Famer Tim Tietrich. Tim, you kind of floated out of there. You were going to tuck in and then you came back out. What was your thinking during the race? Uh, just whatever best trip I could get. Uh, I knew we had the stable mate on the front, so... Uh, I just wanted to be in control of it. This track's more of a speed track most of the time, and if I didn't go, I was going to have to be first up maybe at the t half, or I just thought I'd go ahead and take charge. I thought I had the best horse, and, you know, I did. Unbelievable acceleration. Have you seen that in many horses? It's been a while, and he's done it consistently all year, and, um, you know, he's not lost a step in his speed, and, you know, again, we didn't pull the plugs. He's just uh, he's a cool animal, man. I can't say enough good things about him. Congratulations. I know you got to got, got roll. Take care. Thank you, Thank Timmy. You. Brett, tell us about Confederate from the beginning to now. You know what? He's uh, he's just been an absolute treat. He, he's a happy horse. You know, he's just super happy all the time. He never gives you any trouble, and he just, um, you know, so keen to get out there and do what he wants to do. And uh, I and I think he knows, um, you know, he can kick butt. You know, he, he knows, you know, which is pretty cool. He knows he's special, but such acceleration. I haven't seen that in many, many a year. 
Yeah, and, and I don't even think we've seen the bottom of it. I mean, his speed is, uh, you know, I, I just feel all the time that he's really untested. So, um, you, know, it, it, you know, as long as he can be, be healthy, you know, health is the key. So a lot of traveling around and it's getting late in the year and everything, but um, everything about him, uh, his mechanics, speed, soundness, is just all fabulous. What did you see in him in the beginning? Well, you know, well, I watched the horse race last year, and he was obviously very, very special then. He, he went some special trips, and he it looked like he could just gather horses in whatever he wanted to. And, um, you know, the, our games turned into a speed game, and uh, he has more speed than them. That's, that's kind of what I saw. Thank you for your time, and congratulations, Brett. Uh, thanks very much. A big congratulations to this year's three-year-old matron winners and all their connections.